Hello again. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about uh, storing the ACM. Remember that the ACM is the access control matrix. Right. So you remember in an earlier lecture we talked about this. We said that the if you have any access control policy, essentially what is that? Well, it's a way of characterizing which subjects have access to which objects in which modes. And so you can represent that in the most general form in an access control matrix, which is just a big matrix that lists all these things. You have the subjects and the objects, and you say for each intersection which uh, accesses that subject is allowed to that object. Um, okay, so um, you can do that, as we said, for any access control policy, Bell and LaPadula, BIBA, role-based access control, or any of the others that we talked about. But usually we don't do that. Why not? Because in realistic systems, most subjects don't have any access to most objects. They may be in you know, someone else's directory or, or some, another domain or something like that. So what do we do? Well, we need to store that information somehow, but we don't usually store it explicitly in the form of that gigantic matrix. Uh, when we talked about Bell and LaPadula, we said, well, what we could do there is instead of storing that information explicitly, we just essentially store it implicitly by uh, the, uh, storing it in the set of rules that we have, like simple security and the star property, that allow us to compute that information on the fly. So, for example, if you know the level of a subject and an object, you can decide by the simple security and the star property what accesses that subject is allowed to that object. And so we're storing it implicitly. In most realistic systems, I mean, that, that works, by the way, for most uh, uh, mandatory access control policies, because in those mandatory access policies, the levels of things don't change very much. But in a realistic system like Unix, where the, uh, the owner of a file can change the permissions at any time, essentially, um, that wouldn't be so convenient. And so what happens in those systems is one of two things. Either you store the information with the objects of the system, or you store it with the subjects. If you store it with the objects, we call that an access control list. If you store it with the subjects, that's called a capability-based system. Okay, so what's an access control list? Um, well, think about uh, Unix, for example, right? In Unix, what you do is with each object, you say what permissions the owner has, the group has, that is the people associated with the owner, and everybody else has. Um, and the, where that information is stored is in the inode for the object. And so what an access control list really is, is a representation of a column in the access control matrix. Here's an example of one right here. Um, and the things that are in that access control list are pairs, subject name, and a set of permissions. So if a particular subject requests uh, access to the object, then you go and you look in the access control list to see if associated with that subject in the list is a, is a set of permissions which contains the, the kind of access that he's asking for, right? And so here, here at the bottom of this slide, for example, is um, a representation of that for a few files in a Unix system, right? So in this case, um, if you look at the three files at, at the bottom, um, the owner has read and write access, the owner being me in this case. The, my group has read access, and nobody else has any accesses, right? This is a convenient way to represent that information. Historically, there have been some systems which have tried to take that same information and store it with the subject instead of with the objects within the system. And these are called capability-based systems. Effectively, what a capability system does is store with the subject a row of the access control matrix. So with a subject, you store a, a set of pairs, uh, object name and access rights. Um, and then what happens is, if that subject wants a particular access to an object, the subject has to present to the operating system one of these pairs, which you can think of as a ticket. The operating system checks to see that the ticket is valid and then grants the access, right? So you might imagine that uh, there's a kind of security issue here, and that is, 
what's to prevent the subject from faking one of these things or creating one on the fly? Well, that's a real problem. And in real capability-based systems, uh, there has to be some mechanism by which you take care of that. So historically what has happened is uh, there's either been a hardware solution or a software solution. The hardware solution in some of these systems was uh, that each word of memory had an additional bit which was set or not depending upon whether that word represented a capability or not. And you can imagine that that gets very expensive. Another way of doing it, a software-based system, is to store the capabilities in specially protected memory, and then the operating system has to control them. The reason why not many of these systems have been built over the years is, is exactly this security issue and, and how to solve that. Okay, so what have we learned in this, in this lesson? Well, we've said that any access control uh, policy can be represented explicitly as an access control matrix. But usually you don't want to do that. And so what happens is that uh, a system will take one of three approaches. Either it will have a set of implicit rules by which we, you can compute the access rights on the fly, or it will have an access control list which stores those permissions with the objects, or it will have, be a capability-based system which stores those permissions with the subjects. Thank you.